Hey guys, what is going on? Joseph Ballmer here, and tonight we are back out in the garage working on the Valkyrie. <clears throat> so, do me a favor. While we're getting into this video, please, when you have a moment, hit that subscribe button down at the bottom of the screen if you haven't already. Make sure when you do, you also hit the notification bell so you get all the updates when I post videos in this series um, as we get this bike put back together and back on the road. Uh, the original video that I posted was about three months ago now, and I've been getting all the parts together and getting a game plan going so that I could start on the bike. Um, but that was when I destroyed the original final drive down here. Um, coming home from work one day, she started grinding, and it tore the spline out of the final drive. And I did a whole video when I tore it down to find out what was wrong about that. I was thinking it was this pinion cup here, but it turns out it tore out the splines on the drive flange here and also inside the differential. So thankfully over here in the box I have a spare differential that has a bad pinion cup so I'm just going to have to swap pinion cups on a good differential. I had to buy the rest of the parts. Now what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to get this swing arm pulled out so that we can replace the swing arm bearings. Now, the swing arm bearings are back behind these cups, on the, or these caps on the side. And you can see on this side, there is a special four flange nut that you will need the special Honda tool to remove and properly retorque. And it will go in there just like that. You can remove it, you can retorque it, and you're also going to need a 17 millimeter Allen. So that uh, I actually got. I've got a set. Um, I've got a set of these big Allens that I bought from Northern Tool here in the United States. Um, they actually weren't too bad, and I think let me find them. If I can get around my stuff here. Because I put my light in the way so you guys can see what I was doing. Dig through my sockets here and get to this. It's on a magnetic rail, and these are clutch. And this set goes up to 22. So it's from 13 all the way up to 22. And it's a really nice magnetic rail, actually. As you can see, I mean, it, it'll stick. There we go. So at 19, 18, 17, I do believe. No, that's 15. Okay, so please tell me there's a 17 here. Yep. Okay. So, 17 millimeter Allen. Uh, it's going to be the same on both sides. And before I can do that, I've already torn the rest of the rear end down. In a previous video, we replaced these shock bushings. Um, we've also put new wheel bearings and dust seals in the rear wheel. But in order to get the swing arm out, the first thing I need to do is remove this Allen bolt and up inside right down next to this fitting, that brake line fitting, there is what appears to be a 10 millimeter bolt right there that I'm going to have to remove uh, to get that line loose. Then I can pull the lock nut and the bolt and I should be able to slide the swing arm out the back of the bike. So I'm going to get, I'm going to dive into that and I'll try and set you guys up back here while I work on that brake line so you can kind of see what I'm doing. small flat blade screwdriver, pocket screwdriver works perfect. Just keep in mind it's just a chrome plastic cap so be careful with it. You break these little fingers off and it won't hold itself on very well. And here again, just another 17 millimeter Allen. This one does not have a lot nut on this side. So just a 17 millimeter Allen and And the reason we're replacing our swing arm bearings 
is because there's a little bit of side play in this swing arm. So we're going to take it apart, replace the bearing, make sure everything's properly greased, retorque it, and go from there. Now, your U joint is right back in here inside this rubber dust boot. So it is completely and entirely possible but we may dislodge that U-joint from the transmission when we remove the swing arm. And there is a procedure for putting it back in there if we do, so it's not a big deal. And that is what the swing arm pivot bolt looks like. So that's what the bearings ride on. Set that one up here and cat next to it. And now we'll go to the other side. First things first, we're going to take our special tool here and break that nut loose. Now, see, here's the problem I'm running into. We're actually now turning the bolt as well. So that's why that tool has the hole down the center. So that you can, when you go to torque it, you have to hold the bolt because you torque the bolt first. And then you have to torque the lock nut. So that's the lock nut. Sad part is this U joint. I don't know if you guys can turn it here. You can see what I'm talking about. This U joint barely has 20,000 miles on it. Actually, it doesn't even quite have 20 on it. That piece of metal. That piece of metal was left from the last U joint because I had a dealer, a Honda dealer replace this and that piece of metal was not cleaned out of the swing arm you can see all the crud the bearing chunks and everything else up in that swing arm hopefully you guys can see that that they didn't clean out so guess what we're going to have to clean that out before we put that back together now Right here, we got a dust seal that attaches to the bearing, and the bearing comes out. The bearing itself actually doesn't look too bad, but I got a new one. Now, the inner race has a dust cap on the back, and in order to get get the inner race out, we're supposed to knock a, knock a hole in the dust cap and then use a special tool from Honda to pull it out, which unfortunately I don't have and I couldn't find online, so I'm going to do my best to figure out an alternative way to knock, the, to knock this inner race out. So, that being said, I'm going to set that up right there, so hopefully so. 
self support. Let's see if we can get in here with a and drive this race out. That is the Honda part number for the new swing arm bearings, and that is the dust seal, the outer race, the bearing, and the dust cap on the inside. The whole kit. So, they do come with some grease in them. be a 39 and a half millimeter
to make sure you didn't knock any dirt down in there. Now these fairings do come pre lubricated to make sure these things have plenty of lubrication. While I was installing that last bearing, um, my other camera died, so I've got to switch cameras now. Uh, I got both. Oh, I got both of the races and bearings in the swing arm. Uh, I went ahead and cleaned up the U joint. I'm going to try and set you guys up in a spot where you can see this camera does not have as wide of an angle on the lens, unfortunately. So it's going to be a little bit harder to get a good shot here. Hopefully you've got a fairly decent view underneath the rear end of the bike as we reinstall this swing arm. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is get the U-joint back in. So I packed the splines full of Somali paste the long end of the U-joint goes onto the transmission, the short end goes to the drive shaft. So I'm going to reach up in here, slide that sucker on, nice and easy, i got plenty of molly paste in it. And then, with any luck, I should be able to slide the swing arm in. Before I do that, I'm going to take my swing arm bolts, get all the old grease cleaned off of them, grease and grit and crap. That way, excuse me, they'll be ready to go back in. I'll put a little bit of fresh molly paste on these. And then as soon as I slide my swing arm in, I can get those started to hold it in place. Now with any luck, I can slide this. right back to where it came from. Yeah, now there's no play in those bearings at all, and they're not even torqued yet. Perfect. I like that. Now let me grab my torque wrench. The pivot bolt on this side is 72 foot-pounds to torque it, and it is 16 on the other. So that's set at 72. Okay, that's 72. Over here, our torque is 16 on that nut on the bolt. All right, what? On this side, I need to tighten, I need to install my lock nut. And that gets tightened to 72 foot-pounds. Now, keep in mind, the torque specs that I'm giving you are for the Valkyrie Interstate only. The standards and the tours, are the, they have different torque specs for the rear swing arm. In order to do this correctly, the reason this tool has a hole in the center of it, it's because we want to make sure that our, uh, as we tighten the lock nut, we do not turn the pivot bolt. So I'm going to run it down by hand, and then we'll torque it to spec. 
And there's a special trick to using this tool. Let me get this run down and then we'll Okay. That's bottomed out. Now Okay, now here's the trick to using the tool. Oh. You need to have the torque wrench at a right angle to the arm on the tool. Because if you do that, then the arm on the tool here, let me aim you up. Then this arm on the tool is not multiplying the torque in any way. So we're going to hold that right there. And we're going to go to 72 foot pounds till she clicks. The wrench is in the way. Okay, that's good sight. All right. Now, let's snap our caps back on. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. It's getting late, so I'm gonna head to bed for tonight. Stay tuned for the next episode when we put the we put the pinion cup on that differential, get that differential all cleaned up, get it installed in the bike, get the back tire back on. Um, I'm going to show you what the nut cage mod is, and then we still have to do the red eye desmog on the engine, get the exhaust back on, and then we will tackle the front end at a different point in time and do fork seals and wheel bearings in the front. Oops, sorry about that. All shaky and stuff. Fork seals, wheel bearings in the front, fork guides, um, the whole nine yards. But we're getting ready. I want to get this thing back on the road because it's been too long since I've been on the bike. So we're going to do that. And, oh, you guys, um, I'm going to go to bed and get some sleep because I'm, I'm out of it. Anyway. Don't be afraid to get out there and get your hands dirty, guys. You might have a little bit of fun doing it. If you have any questions, as always, throw them down in the comments section. I'll be more than happy to try and answer them for you. Uh, like I said, the torque specs I gave you for this are only for the Valkyrie Interstate. Um, the standard and tours have different torque specs. Um, I don't know what I'm thinking. Anyway, we will catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Please share this with your friends. We'll see you later.